Welcome everyone. I'm Jennifer Goodman and I lead the military initiative here at Aramark. I'm joined today by Vince Phipps, who is going to share with us about his experience with Aramark. Vince, please introduce yourself and tell us about your connection to the military community. Sure, thank you. I'm certainly glad to be here and glad to be a part of this. Uh, Vince Phipps, um, the regional vice president uh, with Collegiate Hospitality. Um, I've been with Aramark 25 years. I uh, spent my first 21 years in our correctional division and the last uh, three and a half years in our collegiate hospitality, hospitality division. Um, it's been great after serving eight years in the, in the military uh, and trying to figure out uh, what the next phase of my life was going to look like. I had the opportunity uh, a long time ago to apply for a job with Airmark. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a funny story, and I'm sure we'll probably get into a little bit of that as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh, 25 years. What an incredible career that has been. Um, tell me. So I know that you mentioned that you started in corrections and, and kind of switched over to collegiate hospitality. Um, you may touch on that, but I'm, I'm really interested in that jump, what you learned from careers that are from corrections rather that set you up for collegiate hospitality and kind of how all that came about. Uh, sure. Well, I, I tell you, uh, when I first got out of the military, um, you know, I was going to college because uh, I, I went in right out of high school after eight years. I didn't have any college. So I got out, figured I'd get some college, you know, behind me and then go back in and become an officer in the military. Um, and I applied for this job really as something to do while I was going to college. I had I'd never heard of Airmark before, <laughs> had zero food service experience, you know, since I was a 13 Bravo, you know, in the military. And, uh, you know, it just it just sort of fit me really well. Um, and uh, I started out as a frontline employee. Uh, and about nine months in, they promoted me to an assistant food service director. Um, and it just kind of sort of took off from there. Uh, uh, really, really growing and learning a lot about, um, you know, food service. Uh, and when you're in corrections, you know, the, the, the structure of that, you know, fit me really well coming out of the military. You know, I'm used to that structure. I'm, I'm used to the regiments, you know, and all those kind of things. And it sort of just made that transition, at least for me, you know, uh, certainly a lot easier. Um, and, and being familiar with the rank and structure and the rank and file and, and dealing with chain of command, you know, all those things were, were, were sort of similar uh, to, my, to my life in the military. Uh, and so really, you know, after, you know, uh, becoming a staff sergeant and all those things in the military, you, you, you know, you pick up the, the leadership part of it, you know, because you go through the different leadership courses that they have for you in the mili military between PODC and, and BNOC and ANOC and all those things that they do. And for those non-military people, <laughs> those are, uh, are just leadership courses that you go through uh, that really teaches you the strategy uh, and the skills that you need to become an effective leader um, uh, throughout the military. Uh, and so by having some of those in, in my background it made it a little bit easier uh, to understand not only how to motivate and, and lead the, the offender population in the prison system, uh, but, you know, it also really helped me to, uh, you know, gain the respect because a lot of the correctional officers and a lot of the folks that work in that industry are prior military too. So, so being able to connect with them in that way really helped forge that relationship uh, throughout uh, my time in corrections. And like I said, when you walk in and they know your prior military, you sort of gain that instant respect and credibility. Uh, and so really it was just learning the food service side of it. Um, you know, because back then, you know, I didn't know how many, you know, gallons was in that or ounces a part of that. I didn't know any of that stuff, right? <laughs> uh, growing up and learning. And so just learning the food service part slowly, you know, week after week, learning how to manage the recipes, understanding what food cost was, you know, understanding how uh, managing inventory and, and understanding just the, the business acumen uh, that, that makes us successful uh, in, 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 in food industry. Uh, that was really the, the part that I had to learn. Uh, but, but, you know, again, I think that what Aramark was looking for at the time and, and still today is finding effective leadership and, and folks that understood how to lead teams, how to motivate teams, how to accomplish and deliver on commitments. And, and like I said, that was sort of bred into me uh, during my time in the military. 
Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And thank you for, for sharing that. As far as when you were first meeting with the different hiring managers and, and considering the opportunity and being considered for it, what suggestions do you have for others that maybe had an MOS, a combat arms MOS like yours even, that doesn't necessarily perfectly translate? What areas do you recommend that they really touch on to demonstrate um, the robust experience that they've gained in the military? Uh, I, I think that was something I, I, I don't know that I knew that at the time. Um, you know, again, I, I say it's a funny story when I first started with Airmark. Um, uh, you know, my in-laws at the time were both lieutenants at the prison. Uh, and so I, I was going to college and I, and I was still on terminal leave from the military. So I wasn't really working, you know, because I had my GI Bill and all those things. And so life was good. And so my mother-in-law at the time harassed me for like three months to go get this job in food service at the prison. I'm like, well, one, I don't want to do food service, right? <laughs> and I certainly don't want to work in a prison. Um, and so after about three months of her harassing me, I finally went and applied for the job. And I did absolutely everything I could not to get the job, right? I'm, I'm slouching in the chair. I'm chewing gum. I'm trying, just having the worst interview possible to not get this job. And they hired me anyway. And, and I tell the story that because I, I went back to my manager and said, you know, one, why did you hire me? I told him the whole story about not wanting this job. right? <laughs> and he says, you know, that day I, I had five interviews. He said the fourth person that came in, there was a soda can on the walkway. He said that person picked up that soda can, walked over and put it in the trash can nearby. And he said as soon as he saw that, he knew he was going to hire that person. And of course, I'm the guy that picked up the soda can, right? <laughs> so without picking up that soda can, I, I wouldn't have the career. But he explained simply that day is he says, look, as I'm building out my team, he said, I wanted people who care. He said, I can teach you food service. I can teach you the business acumen. I can teach you all those things. He said, but I can't teach you to care. And he said, the team I want, I wanted people and needed people to care. And he said, as soon as he saw me pick up that can, he knew I cared about things. Uh, so, so I think that when you talk about applying for jobs in this industry, where, you know, maybe everything doesn't translate, you know, as perfectly as you would like to, I think once the folks understand that one, you have the leadership abilities to lead anywhere, if you can lead troops on a battlefield or anywhere else, you can certainly lead them, you know, in any other industry. And I think the second part of that is make sure they understand that, you know, at the bottom line, we truly care about what we do. We truly care about the folks that are around us and we truly care about our people. And those are things that I picked up from the military. No, that's great. And I appreciate you, um, you know, the honesty of calling out and saying, I didn't want to do food service and I didn't want to do, you know, work in, in correctional institutions. And I think that that can sometimes be a hesitation for a lot of folks. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, you mentioned that leaders took notice of some of that work that you did and who you were. How did some of the leaders help you as well as they saw that in you? Um, what steps did they take to help you develop as well? Sure. Uh, and I tell folks, I've, I've been extremely fortunate, both in the military and in my time with Aramark. I've, I've had some amazing leaders. Um, going all the way back to my, my first RVP, Dan Herrick, he was, he was a great RVP. Uh, he, he was, what I loved about him uh, is he was really a people person. Um, you know, when, when RVPs, you know, come around, you know, usually they're to see the higher ups that we used to call them when I was an hourly employer, right? The higher ups. Um, and, um, but he would always take time to talk to every single hourly employee when he walked through. Um, and I never forgot that. And I always thought, you know, if, if I ever get a chance to become an RVP, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be the guy that makes sure I talk and stop and, and, and introduce myself, ask them their name, remember things about them. And that's who Dan Herrick was. He was that kind of guy. So that was my first example post-military uh, of a leader. Uh, and then, you know, uh, and he's one that kind of helped me get promoted and kind of helped me with a lot of things throughout my career. Um, and then I also had another leader who's been a longtime mentor for me uh, named George Vaughn. Uh, he was with us for a long time and, and he finally retired a few years back. Um, but he was another leader. And I think he was the probably the first leader post-military that had a, 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 a unique way of being very candid. Um, of being, uh, you know, he could level with you in a way that he left you with your dignity. 
Uh, and I appreciate that, right? You know, you get in the military sometimes, you get those sergeants that, that love to chew you out, right? <laughs> and love to dust you, as we used to call it. Um, but, but, you know, and, and sometimes that's all they wanted to do. They just wanted to use their power to, to do that. Um, he, was, he was a leader that really took time to make sure you, you developed, you learned. Um, now, don't get me wrong, he knew how to also chastise um, if he wanted to. And I, I always tell the story to people. The first time I got, I got my, my butt chewed out by him, he, uh, I'd gotten into it with a finance guy at the time. Uh, we, we just couldn't agree on a budget plan. And, and I was probably a little mean spirited, right? That I should have been. Uh, and so he, he calls me up and says, hey, uh, you need to be at the office tomorrow, the Indianapolis office. And he says, we're going to have a chit. And I said, what's a chit? He said, well, uh, he said, you know what a chit chat is, right? A chit chat is when we both talk. A chit is when I talk and you listen. <laughs> and I said, okay, then. Uh, so, because, you know, he never used foul language. He never raised his voice, but you always, he always got his point across and, and you knew he meant business and he was a really great leader. And again, I adopted that same style. You know, I'm not a screamer. I'm not a yeller. I don't use a foul language thing, but I'm always very candid. Uh, one of the things that he taught me is he used to always say, look, we don't own, we don't owe you promotions. You have to earn those. You know, we don't owe you bonuses. You got to earn that. We don't owe you a paycheck. You got to earn that. He said, as leaders, the only thing we owe you is the truth. That's it. He said, everything else you have to learn. And I never forgot that. And I always tell my, my team is, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be truthful with him. I'm always going to be open, honest, and candid and give you the right feedback because that's really the only way that you can develop and get better. And, you know, nothing is more frustrating when you apply for a job, don't get it, but no one tells you why you didn't get it, right? And, and so he always made sure that, you know, you always circle back around people and explain to them, hey, you know what, you did this well, but here's probably where you came up short. Here are some things that you need to work on. And so, again, those are those lessons that I never forgot. And I try to do that in everything that I do every single day as a leader. That's great. Vince, I love the stories. They bring so much value and context to conversation. So as we shift to wrap up, um, what I will say is I think you've given the audience a wonderful example today of how as they are having those conversations during interviews or to be considered for promotions, they put it within the context of stories and lay out what happened and what those outcomes were um, because it is really so impactful as you've shown today. Um, it's been wonderful learning about your career path here at Aramark. I want to um, leave our audience with any advice that you have for the military community members that are looking for their next career opportunity and to grow professionally. Sure. Yeah, what I'll tell you is, and I've spoken a lot of uh, former military folks as they're getting out trying to figure out what they want to do. Um, and, and it, you know, really depends on what you want to chase, right? You certainly folks think, you know, uh, military members are underpaid and I'll say absolutely, right? <laughs> uh, so if, if it's all about, you know, finding that job that's going to make you rich, certainly pursue that. Um, I, I tell you, for me, one of the things I enjoyed about, uh, you know, being in the military and SF and all those things was, you know, every time, you know, the bat phone ring, would ring, you knew you were packing up and you were going somewhere to make a difference in somebody's life in one way or the other. And, and that's what I was looking for. I wanted to be with a company, with a group of folks, with an industry that I knew I could impact other people's lives. And I think that if you're looking for that, you know, follow that right? Uh, because it fits everything that we've always done with the military. Uh, and Aramark is certainly the, the, the organization. We have the right leaders. We have the folks that understand that we truly do want to make a difference in people's lives. And, and I would say follow that whenever you're looking for that next opportunity when you come out of the military, because I think it's in our heart. I think it's in our DNA. That's why we joined the military, to be a service to others. Uh, and I think that that is everything that we do here at Aramark. That's great. Thank you so much, um, Vince, for sharing your story today, for sharing your tips. Um, I am confident that the audience is going to take away um, so much from listening to you today. I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you.